Mina, we thought we'd do a little mini so this week, didn't we? Following the passing of Mina Raiola. And I'm going to have to apologise to everyone for the inappropriateness of this. But I know that long-time listeners have heard the sort of the just verbal tripping up sometimes over Mino and Mina in the same sentence. And I just said Minisode. So I've got Minisode, Mina and Mino <laughs> all at once. And 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 that's just gonna gonna happen. I um think it was really awful how this sort of all got sort of weirdly covered during the week where there were these early reports that he died when he actually hadn't and you got this sort of then denials of him having died and I you know, my my sort of feeling about anyone sort of brushing to be first on, on news like that. I, I really, as a journalist, it really frustrates me, you know, be right on that. Don't, don't be first on it. Make sure things are true. But he did um, pass away. He's, he's had a, a long illness and um, I, I, I almost don't know where to, to sort of start. It's, it's obviously just a absolutely sort of horrendous and, and, and tragic thing to happen. I mean, he's 54 years old. It's so, so young. Um, to lose your life. And he's someone who has absolutely left a, a monumental impact on, on modern football, I think. Um, monumental, maybe I'm, maybe I'm using too, too hyperbolic a word, but he's left a real tangible impact on, on modern football that, that is going to endure after he's, um, now that he's passed away. I think that the sort of there are so many things in the reactions to, to his passing that I find really illuminating. I, I think the most sort of illuminating thing for me is is how many of his players have spoken with such affection, such tenderness for him, such warmth for him, such clear appreciation for the things that he's done in their career. Moise Ken talking about him taking him off the streets. Um, and I think the other thing that, that really jumped out was the sort of official family um statement that got put out in which it was a really short statement, but he was referred to as the best football agent ever, basically. I'm maybe paraphrasing from the exact phrasing, but it was basically that. And I thought it's so sort of indicative of who he was, that his family chose to to to, to put that front and center, that that, you know, his his work was his identity. That was who he considered himself to be. That was what was important to him, being the best football agent. And clearly when it comes to being the best if your personal relationships were so good that all these people who work with you felt that way about you, um, you know, the best is, is always going to be subjective, but clearly he was doing a lot of things right. It's an interesting one with um, Mina Raiola because he is still a controversial figure because, you know, mm -hmm. by many it's, it's been dubbed as a man who makes so much money that in many ways has ruined the transfer market because of the commissions asked for, and his response to all of it was, I've never held a gun to any of you. And mm. whatever you pay has been your choice because you have needed me and because I've been more than an agent. And he has been more than an agent because he is the man to resolve problems sometimes for sporting directors when the transfer market is closing or there are problems in trying to move on players or trying to manage accounts. He is the man that will be called in the middle of the night to try to rectify and to offer assistance. And he has been a friend to so many sporting directors. And the fact that Beppe Marotta came out and spoke about the fact that he's lost a friend there and just how important Mino Raiola is and what a good man he is tells you just how much he changed people's lives. And even those people that you think, if anything, would have had problems with Mino Raiola, considering the amount of money that he has requested or that is owed to him as part of his deals. But it's actually the sporting directors that also feel his loss. Just a quick, I guess, backdrop into him. Mino Raiola is an Italian Dutch uh, football agent. Like Nikki mentioned, he's 54. He, his family emigrated where well, he was born in Napoli and they emigrated to the Netherlands and, and opened restaurants. And he, he was somebody that wanted to make a difference from a very young age. He was always really... Um, proud of having connections or meeting people in high places, whether they're CEO of banks or footballers. But um, there's this beautiful story of when he shows up to to meet Zlatan Ibrahimovic and he like, takes out these little pieces of paper and says, oh, I don't know, you know, when you look at all these numbers of Shevchenko and the others, you're just not as good. And he said, well, if I had the numbers of Shevchenko, I don't need an agent. And um, <laughs> And I just think it's just such a sweet story, but it's obviously a friendship that endured and... Mina Raiola is sort of the guy off the street. Like he, it's interesting because if you ever met Jorge Mendes, 
this guy is groomed to the last like the hair on his head he is just perfect when he's walking down the street his suit is expensive you can smell the cologne everything about Jorge Mendes who is Cristiano Ronaldo's agent and many others probably the other big agent that everyone knows really he's just that exactly what you would expect and then you see me and I and he wears like a Hawaiian shirt just doesn't care <laughs> you know like very much about like I'm here to die for my clients and you and I and I am the sponge that will absorb all the criticism, all the talk of mercenary action or or oh, you know, Donnarumma, Dollarumma, whatever you want to say. I will absorb all of that and I will make sure that my clients are happy. And boy mm -hmm. were they happy because it, it's exactly what you said, Nikki. It's it's the it's Donnarumma saying that I will fulfill your request and I will, you know, do all the things you asked of me. It is delicious in that remarkable piece of emotion that he left there on Instagram. Frankly speaking, it was just one of the most beautifully written um, pieces in which he called him his best friend. It's Zlatan rushing to be by his side. It is just, you know, the fact that the likes of Erling Haaland, who probably don't need an agent because they're so fascinating at this point and wanted by everyone, still choosing Mino Raiola. Ages ago, when we started this, you know, when we talked, when we had this podcast and the pre the predecessor version of it, we talked about once having an agency called Mina Mina. So, yes. a, I don't know. From a personal point of view, I think it's a, it's obviously always sad to lose someone who's only fifty four years old. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm sure that you all have your own opinions on on who he was, but don't let judgments ruin anything. If anyone cries this much over somebody, then he has really touched so many lives. Yeah, our old friend Gab Markoshi wrote a column on his day and, and I think and I correctly characterised him as someone who was a complicated figure in, in a very complicated area of, of football mediating. It's a lovely column from Gab. Um, I I think um, I think when it comes to sort of who he was, what you just talked about, Mina, like the the the, the way of sort of being so different to the Jorge Mendes of the world, or indeed, you know, Jonathan Barnett, who's another of the big agents who you never hear or see anything about because he, he chooses to keep himself very sort of withdrawn. But any of the big agents, he, he was such a different sort of approach. You know, you, you're so used to, and in, in Ibrahimovic even wrote about this in his book, expecting him to show up in like a pinstripe suit or something. <laughs> and he shows up in a, in a you know, dirty T-shirt and jeans. <laughs> and all just lots of food. Yeah. <laughs> That's something I do. <laughs> He went his own way. And I think that that was one of the reasons that players really related to him. It was partly because he was just very genuine. But also, you know, footballers spend plenty of their time getting talked down to by people in suits who like to sort of, in their way, lord it over them in business. You know, the, the football clubs and their directors, in the end, you know, yes, don't cry for rich top tier footballers who have lots of money, but they, they do trade them as commodities. Mm -hmm. Whereas here was someone who related to them as a person. And I think people miss that sometimes, you know, how some footballers might feel really sort of ill at ease in this world of suits. And you know, I think Abraham is probably a bad example because he feels at ease anywhere because he's very self-possessed, but they aren't, footballers are not necessarily all, some of them are, some of them aren't, but some of them really aren't people of suits and, and fancy sort of formal occasions. And I always remember interviewing Marco Verratti and apologizing to him at the end because my Italian is my second language, even though I think I speak it quite fluently and saying, you know, I'm sorry if I made some mistakes. And he said, oh, your language is, your Italian is better than mine. And of course that was a joke, but also like what he means is he speaks very informally and I've learned it in quite a formal way. So I speak in this sort of more formal language. I mean, if I sat down with you in whatever language he was talking to, he spoke informally to you, whether or not you were um, an 18 year old footballer or if you were Agnelli, you know, like whoever you were going to sit with, he was going to talk to you as he was. And I think a lot of footballers really, really responded to that. Um, when it comes to his impact as an agent, the, the transfer market impact is huge. I think he's moved the needle on how much we talk about the transfer market. I think he's helped make it into this sort of more showbiz event that is now, you know, part of the media news cycle. I think the one gray area for me with him and his work, because I think clearly he made all of his clients a lot of money and, and very successfully, or at least a lot of his big clients. There was one thing that I, I picked up in an article, an Italian article I read today that said that only two of his clients won the Champions League. And I think that's one interesting thing with Raiola that, that, that I always wondered is, was he doing the right decisions for his clubs to make, for his clients to make money or was he making the right decisions for them to win? But in the end, 
that's still a choice that they can make. You know, our, our footballers are not beholden to us to have the same priorities of, as us. And I think in a short career, you're entitled to prioritize making the money you want to make as well. So I think he's, yeah, I think as Gab put it, a complicated character in a very complicated world, football agency, but without question, someone who generated enormous affection from the people he worked with and who knew him best within this industry. It's an interesting, sorry, I just want to pick up on that when you said only two of them won the Champions League. I'm quite surprised by that, considering how many influential players that he has under his control. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, you know, a lot said about him moving them, but how many of them, maybe we can say Donnarumma was probably open to whatever destination mm -hmm. he just wanted to change, but how many of the others actually chose the destination that they wanted mm -hmm. to go to? And I wonder if he is just somebody who makes your dreams come true or he's somebody who actually decides that for you. So... Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think about Paul Pogba moving back to Manchester United, surely that was a move made from the heart as well, considering who yeah, are, for sure. you know, maybe that's also the reason why he wants to leave now, whatever it is, right? Because they, there isn't the opportunity to win all these trophies. But I guess the others are either, you know, Haaland and, and God knows what's going to happen in his future and, and did it, but who chose, I think, was a remarkable decision to use to choose Juventus, even if they didn't necessarily win the Champions League trophy that, you know, they were hoping to with him. But yeah, it's always, agents are always so misunderstood because you don't know what their reasoning is and you always doubt them and suspicious of them. But it's like you said, you know, if, if he's this beloved, then it means he changed a lot of lives. And uh, for that, rest in peace, Nina. <laughs>